Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We've got some more 2A news for you, and this one is a doozy. It looks like the Fifth Circuit has vacated the ATF's frame and receiver rule. We are going to break into this one in a bit more detail. Um, I haven't done an article from... Uh, from the firearms blog in a while so i thought i would read one of their updates on it that pete wrote and uh, get you guys up to speed on this um this has only been a couple of days now that this has been out so some relatively new news before we get started i would like to thank our friends at cmmg for supporting our videos if you're looking for anything in the ar realm they are definitely the king of weird they do a lot of cool stuff they've got their bufferless descent line which is amazing of course they do some really cool hybrid work like the anvil and the mutant also known as the mark 47 um, they, uh, AR-15 22 conversion kits are amazing. Check them out. Use the code IV8888 to save yourself a good bit of money. And that also lets them know that we sent you their way. So big thanks to CMMG for supporting our efforts here on the channel. All right, let's get into this. Okay. Vacated. A federal judge knocks down the ATF frame and receiver rule. This was just from a few days ago. And Pete, from the firearms blog is going to get us up to speed here um you know sometimes like i'll read articles from ammo land you know john crump stuff or perhaps firearms blog uh truth about guns I, you know some of these guys i like the way they write and i like the way they present the information so um really good stuff let's get into it <clears throat> A federal judge has vacated the ATF final rule that changed the definition of what constitutes a firearm under federal law in the United States. I'm going to leave the full legal analysis to someone more qualified, such as our own Daniel. Why? But the big takeaway here is that the U.S. Congress passes laws that agencies are entrusted to enforce, not to redefine as they deem appropriate. Please see the press release from the Firearms Policy Coalition at the end of this article. All right, the federal judge knocks down the ATF frame or receiver rule. Excerpts below. All right, so these excerpts are from the full version, but this is giving you the meat and potatoes. This case presents the question of whether the federal government may lawfully regulate partially manufactured firearms components, related firearms products, and other tools and materials in keeping with the Gun Control Act of 1968. Because the court concludes that the government cannot regulate those items without violating federal law, the court holds that the government's recently enacted federal rule, definition of frame or receiver, and identification of firearms, uh, 827 Federal Register 24, yada yada, is unlawful agency action taken in excess of the ATF's statutory jurisdiction. On this basis, the court vacates the final rule. Well, this is some pretty interesting information coming out because what this also means is that since the same regulatory loophole, if you will, was used to create the frame and receiver rule as was used to create the bump stock rule, uh, the brace rule, and all of this sort of stuff, this paints a pretty clear picture of what is going to happen moving forward on all of these other things. Remember, none of this stuff went through Congress, right? Congress didn't vote on a law to change the Gun Control Act in 1968 to include these new definitions or to include these new items. Now, Congress would have to pass something through the House and the Senate and have to go to the president's desk in order for it to become law, right? The ATF is not a law-making organization, so that's where this gets into some slippery situations. Um, so let's read on. In April 2022, ATF published the final rule changing, among other things, the 1978 definition of frame or receiver. Uh, let's see. ATF then defined the terms frame and receiver along the same lines as the 1978 rule, though with updated, more precise technical terminology. But ATF did not stop there. Rather than merely updating the terminology, ATF decided to regulate partial frames and receivers. Under the new final rule, the terms frame and receiver shall include a partially complete, disassembled, or non-functional frame or receiver, including a frame or receiver parts kit that is designed to or may be readily completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to function as a frame or receiver. But... The term shall not include a forging, casting, printing, extrusion, unmachined body, or similar article that has not yet reached a stage of manufacture where it is clearly identifiable as an unfinished component part of a weapon. So essentially, if you've got a raw block of aluminum, they're saying, okay, well, that's not a receiver, although you throw that into a, into a CNC machine with the right program and it spits out a receiver. 
If it looks like a receiver, it is a receiver, is what the ATF is trying to say. So why does this really matter? What, where does this come into play? Well, they were trying to change it to where if, let's say, a gunsmith or a gun store took in, an, let's just say, a home-produced firearm, like someone 3D printed their own frame and wanted to bring it into a shop and sell it or pawn it or, or even just log it in for repair or something like that. What they're saying is that upon pickup, um, that would be under a whole bunch of scrutiny. They would have to like do a 4473 and they'd have to log it in and create a serial number and all of this random uh, rigmarole that we talked about in previous videos about why this frame and receiver rule basically requires gun stores to act essentially like police in a way to go to ask really hard questions about, oh, well, where was the origin of this gun? Where did it come from? To be clear, Ever since the founding of this country, even before the founding of this country, it has been completely normal and legal for people to produce their own firearm. Whether, and it doesn't matter how fancy or basic that firearm is, if it's a basic zip gun that just uses like some water pipe to, you know, make your own single shot slam fire shotgun, that is legal. You can do that, right? Um, or if you 3D print some fancy CZ Scorpion setup that uses a Scorpion kit and you make your own CZ Scorpion or your own Glock or whatever, you can totally do that. Um, it's just, they're, they're trying to create more instances that they can, you know, point their finger at you is really what this all comes down to. Of course, the Fifth Circuit saw the, the light on this, and I hope that this is going to paint a very good clear picture moving forward for the brace situation and the bump stock situation, which of course those things are not out of the woods yet. Um, parts that may become receivers are not receivers. Congress carefully defined in terms its terms in the Gun Control Act. The primary definition of firearm in the Gun Control Act contains three parts. Any weapon, including a starter gun, which one will or two is designed to or three may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive under the primary definition of firearm is first and foremost a weapon underscoring that point congress explicitly named starter guns in the definition because starter guns are not obviously weapons then because weapons parts are also not weapons, Congress created a secondary definition covering specific weapons parts. The frame or receiver of any such weapon. Uh, notably, Congress did not cover all weapons parts, only frames and receivers, and only the frames and receivers of any such weapon that Congress described in its primary definition. FPC and FPCAF win. Federal judge vacates ATF's unlawful frame or receiver rule. Fort Worth, Texas, June 30th, 2023. Today, Firearms Policy Coalition and FPC Action Foundation announced that a federal judge has granted summary judgment for the plaintiffs in Vanderstock versus Garland, vacating the ATF's frame or receiver rule and preventing the federal government from enforcing it. The opinion can be viewed at fpclegal.org. This case presents the question of whether the federal government may lawfully regulate partially manufactured firearms components, related firearms products, and other tools and materials in keeping with the Gun Control Act of 68. Uh, we already read that part earlier. We're thrilled to see that the court agree the ATF's frame or receiver rule exceeds the agency's congressionally limited authority, said Cody, uh, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name because I don't want to butcher it, the attorney for the constitutional litigation and FPC's counsel in this case. With this decision, the court has properly struck down ATF's rule and ensured that it cannot enforce that which it never had the authority to publish in the first place. And Cody, I apologize. I, I'm not, I'm not going to try to butcher your last name, bro. This is a monumental victory against the tyrannical ATF. Um, Firearms Policy Coalition and FPC Law have argued that this rogue agency has unlawfully attacked gun owners in this latest round of rulemaking, and we are grateful to see the court agree, said Richard Thompson, F FPC's Vice President of Communications. We will not stop, however, with this latest victory. FPC and FPC Law will continue to bring these cases to put a stop to the immoral and unconstitutional actions of the disarmament regime. Well said. Um, Plaintiffs in this case are two individuals, Tactical Machining LLC and FPC, FPCAF, uh, represents the plaintiffs alongside Mountain States Legal Foundation. 
Individuals who would like to join the FPC grassroots army and support important pro rights uh, lawsuits and programs like these can sign up over at joinfpc.org and of course they go on to talk about all the stuff they've done their no nonprofit status and everything like that i would totally recommend everyone join fpc we'd love to have you at goa as well i mean look a lot of these gun groups are doing some fantastic work okay you know goa fpc and i hate to say it even the nra is throwing their their you know hat in the pile here and there um you know i'm, I'm not gonna sit here and 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 talk a bunch of crap about anybody but the bottom line is it's probably important to support just about any gun group that you think um you know is doing the right kind of work for you i mean you you see what these people are doing you see what fpc is doing you see what we're doing at goa you see what nra is doing publicly um you know right now these gun groups need all the support they can get and uh if you become a member it's always beneficial uh, for us to get those membership numbers up uh, for GOA anyway, if you use my link in the description box below, um, I receive zero compensation connection with your GOA membership. But if you use my link, it also lets GOA know that I sent you over there. Um, that's just mainly so they, they know that I sent you. And we're trying to get the Georgia numbers up. I am the Georgia State Director here uh, for GOA here in the state of Georgia. So we would love to bump our Georgia numbers up. If you're here in Georgia especially, we'd love to have you as a GOA member. Um, this is great news. Uh, you know, Look, we are used to black eyes in the 2A community. We are used to <laughs> all this crap, you know, having to constantly fight. And, and very rarely do we actually gain any real ground back in some form of an offensive. So it's great to see that we're gaining a bit of ground back. And this frame and receiver rule is an essential first step in getting past the bump stock situation, the brace situation, and maybe even putting a complete stopper in the NFA completely in time. Trust me, it's coming, right? The post-Bruin landscape is an exciting and interesting landscape. The uh, Supreme Court has been handing out some doozies here lately. I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail, but let's just say the Supreme Court is in the mood to, uh, uh, to lay down the law a little bit. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. And, you know, things like this are great news, and I'm happy to share it with you. Um, I try to reserve these 2A news updates for, you know, really super important beneficial things. I may not get in the weeds on every single little topic. I will say there are a lot of great channels out there that do sometimes twice and three times a day updates with every little tiny thing going on in the 2A uh, world. I try not to share every little bit of news, but when we get some exciting news like this, I want to spread the word. Make sure you're following people like Guns and Gadget, uh, Mr. Guns and Gear, Arm Scholar, all those guys are great. Um, uh, Washington uh, legal armed attorneys. There's so many great um, channels that are putting out uh, both legal and news updates uh, related to the Second Amendment. So there's never been a better time to be well informed on what's going on. And I appreciate you giving me some of your time today. Thank you so much. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.